Hello and welcome, I'm Hi C and this is Toku Rev, serving as an introduction series to Tokusatsu movie and TV shows, helping you figure out what you want to spend your time watching. Today we are talking about Superhuman Machine Metalder. <laughs> Part of Toei's now defunct Metal Hero series premiering in March of 87 and concluding in January of 1988. I have a bit of a personal history with this show. You see, I didn't grow up watching Tokusatsu. I didn't know what it was. Sure, I was aware of Saban's Mighty Morphing Power Rangers and I knew it was based off Japanese TV shows, but honestly, I didn't even really know what that meant as a kid. All I really knew is... Eh, I thought it was cool. I never really dug into the how and why until a few years ago, after seeing a clip of Zoo Ranger from what I knew as the Green with Evil miniseries. I always assumed the American adaptations were close to the plot and just subbed in the American actors. Once I realized Zoo Ranger was nothing like Mighty Morphing, I started to wonder about VR Troopers. And the answer was pretty different from Power Rangers. You see, VR Troopers wasn't an adaptation of one show but an adaptation of three different shows in the Metal Hero series, featuring superhero machine Metalder, or just Metalder as it's referred to these days. The other two shows were Dimensional Warrior Spielbin and Space Sheriff Shader. And to my knowledge, this is the only adaptation that took three shows and turned them into one for one specific American adaptation. Finding out just what kind of editing magic it took to make VR Troopers is what finally made me sit down and watch a tokusatsu series from start to finish. So I started with Metalder. Without this series, I probably wouldn't be making videos now. Metalder starts off with Dr. Koga visiting his son's grave, the second sub-lieutenant, Tatsuo Koga, who perished in the Pacific War. While grief-stricken, Dr. Koga created an android body that resembles his late son, with the ambition to use him as a weapon during the war. Dr. Koga ended up leaving Japan to begin work with NASA, leaving the android body behind in his hidden lab, the Silver Caucus. In the 42 years that he's been gone, he's learned that the Merchant of Death, God Neros, has been secretly plotting the world into a constant state of crisis. With the fear that the Neros Empire will exact their dream of world domination, Dr. Koga has returned to Japan in hopes of activating his android creation to fight off the Neros Empire. <laughs> giving us our protagonist of the show, Ryusi Tsuruji, an android made to resemble Dr. Koga's son, Tatsuo. Ryusi has a reflection circuit. This gives him the same feelings as a human, along with a sense of right and wrong. Ryusi is looking for his identity. Knowing the only way to make Ryusi understand that the Neros Empire is his enemy, Dr. Koga lets the Neros army take his life. This leads Ryusi down a path of self-discovery, interactions and relationships with both the humans he comes across and the foes he fights on the battlefield. Throughout the series, you see his transformations, starting with a purpose to fight and defeat the Neros Empire, transitioning to help him protect the sanctity of life itself. While Ryusi has an arc, he does often feel one-dimensional. Most of his interactions can really be summed up by a series of chuckles. When Ryusi is overcome with emotion, like when he sees his creator killed, he's transformed into the superhuman machine, Metalder. Metalder is tough, but still vulnerable. In early episodes, he's often defeated by members of the Neros armies. In times of need, he discovers new abilities, but he never feels overpowered. With just a handful of special moves, such as the laser arm and the G-kick, he's powered by super gravitational energy affording him a lot of mobility, leaping great distances. Yeah! I'm a big fan of Metalder's design. It's the thing that I liked most as a kid watching VR Troopers. The blue and the red armor are pleasant to look at. The molded nose and eyes remind me of a typical sci-fi robotic humanoid. The exposed circuit boards, buttons, lights, and tubing making him feel like a rough prototype that was designed inside of a lab. He feels robotic, helping to remind the viewer that these are the eyes he's seeing the world through, not human eyes. He's cool. 
without being over the top or needing constant transitions in costumes and weaponry. Metalder does have access to a few machines that hide inside the Silver Caucus. The Silver Caucus is hidden within the windy caves of Fuji, under the ruins of the former Imperial Army's headquarters. Usually underground, the Silver Caucus can rise when it's needed to dispatch vehicles. Metalder's two main vehicles are the Side Phantom, a motorcycle with a detachable sidecar, and the Metal Charger. It's, uh, it's a Mazda that flies, folds out into jet wings, but is still a Mazda. While I think the side phantom is cool, I really wish the metal charger was more than just a regular car that can fly. At the time of the show's airing, this was a new car, so I guess I'm supposed to believe that Dr. Koga went back and placed this car there 42 years ago to be used as a weapon. But really, it's only in the show long enough to justify a toy being made. The Silver Caucus is maintained by Springer, a robot Doberman who Dr. Koga created before Metalder, kind of like a big brother, if you will. Springer's role is simple. He keeps the Silver Caucus rolling and helps repair Metalder. He has the ability to speak, helping Metalder understand what it means to be a robot and not human. He's a fun, silly little side character who could easily border on annoying, but the show never really overuses him. <laughs> The first person that Ryusi actually meets is Mai. Mai is a photographer who is always out and about, serving Ryusi's introduction to human life, often laughing at his misunderstanding of human customs. She's nice and sweet and doesn't often fall into the damsel role. She is captured a few times, but it isn't too often. She mostly serves to help further Ryusi's understanding of humanity. And that's her in a nutshell. She's simple, sweet, and takes photos. So the main character and supporting characters of Metalder are a little boring. That brings in my absolute favorite part of Metalder, the Neros Empire. I think Emperor God Neros is terrifying. I love the costume, I love the backdrop, I love that his form of world domination is financial enslavement. Metalder can tend to be a bit bland, but the soldiers that make up the ranks of the Neros armies definitely are not. Meeting in the Ghost Bank, a secret underground base housing transports for each of the Empire's four distinct armies. The Armored Army, consisting of cyborgs and regular humans in armor. The Robotic Warrior Army, made up of androids descended from the same technology that gave birth to Metalder. The Monster Army, featuring genetically engineered mutants. And then, the Armament Army, serving as the big guns, walking tanks and warheads. Each army has defined attitudes towards the others, with squabbles between who's the biggest and baddest, fighting for the right to sacrifice themselves to serve the Neros Empire. Each army has defined titles and ranks associated. This makes it feel like there's a real culture inside the Neros Empire. Most recruits have a personality that shines outside of the Monster of the Week trope. Their inspirations for fighting run rampant. Some are forced to fight. Some are trying to achieve a dream, and it's their only means. Some just want to be the exactors of mayhem. While others will only fight for valor and purpose, not every monster is defeated. Some are shown mercy and become allies. The show does a really good job of bringing back monsters and making their story feel like they matter. The Empire is the biggest selling point. <laughs> Time to talk production. Metalder is a show from the 80s, so all that you are going to find here is practical effects, and they are glorious. Big explosions, creative camera angles, and interesting sets. After talking about the CG eyesores in Kamen Rider W, it feels so good to praise the visual effects in Metalder. Now, this might be my personal taste shining through. It's an old show. It was shot on film. If a 4-3 ratio and film grain bother you, that's understandable. But for me, it helps me become absorbed inside the show. I love the monster designs. There's almost nothing here that makes me want to turn my eyes away. Except maybe these sumo warrior dudes. Those guys, get those guys a costume. Sometimes the locations do feel like somebody said, hey, Let's go have another day at the rock quarry, or hey, you want to go hang out in the woods? It just snowed. I bet that'll look cool. 
There are no wire harnesses to make the inhuman acrobatics possible, so the show relies a lot on quick cut editing and tricky camera angles, giving the illusion of dramatic inhuman feats. It's a solid production. The visuals sell themselves well. On the other hand, sound sometimes shows its age. There are a lot of canned sound effects. They serve a purpose, but they definitely stand out to me as dated. So can I recommend Metalder? Well, it's from the 80s, and there's no getting around that. If the lower resolution and sound design bothers you, I'd encourage you to push past it for the gripping action scenes, car chases, and big explosions. But that's really it. While I love the nuance and interesting characters of the Neros Empire, the main cast and storylines haven't aged well. They're a little boring and can over-rely on tropes. Ryusi is not an engaging protagonist. I like the idea of his journey, but he's boring and the development moves slowly. Maya's nice and sweet, but that's really all she has going for her. There is a cool story here, but it's just never in focus and having a newer TV sensibility makes it really hard to go back and get deeply invested in Metalder. It's great in short bursts. One or two episodes here or there is fun, but if you're planning on marathoning this, don't. It's a slog. It wasn't made to be digested in big bursts, and shouldn't be, but it is well made. The effects in action still hold up well. So if you're new to Toku, and you were thinking about adding this to your list, definitely don't put it at the top. Seeing the relation to VR Troopers is fun. It sends you on all kinds of nostalgia trips. Every time a Monster of the Week shows up, you get a little tingle and go, ha, I kind of remember that. So if you want to see those origins, or you want to dive into an older show of Toku Past, it's a great watch just in short burst. I would love to see a reimagining of Metalder. I really love the themes that they use. And this might actually be possible. In recent years, Toei has been slowly bringing back the Metal Hero series. With a few films in 2012 and a team up with Deca Ranger in 2017. So I'm definitely holding out hope that Metalder will find his way back to the screen. Well, thank you everyone. I'm Hi C and this has been Toku Rev, Superhuman Machine Metalder. If you like this, I encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe for more Toku introductions. In the first episode, I took a look at Kamen Rider W. Next time will be my first dive into the Ultraman series. I welcome all of you to join the crew and go on an adventure.